Hey guys, Randy here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to take a look at a set of in-bed camper jacks or lifts. We get questions about these all the time. How effective are they? How do I use them? How I put them together? So we're going to go over all that. But something I really like about these is that they are very, very compact and very easy to store when not in use. When you see something like this, you generally think, where am I going to keep them? How am I going to keep them stored? As you can see, once we break these down, they're really nice, small, and compact, so we can very easily tuck these off to the side and really only get them out when we need to use them. As far as assembly goes, it's really going to be pretty easy. We always want, you can see our tripod there, got a shorter leg here. We want that to be out and away from our vehicle. At that point, we're going to grab our main lift tube. Just so want to slide that through and into the base. At that point, we grab a hold of our winch cable. We're going to back this off until we can place it around our pulley at the top. That's really all there is to it. We've got it assembled, we've got it ready to go. A few tips for using these. We always want to make sure we're on a good level surface. And we want to make sure that it's a solid surface. I would definitely recommend if you've got any kind of soft ground at all that you use some kind of stiffening device underneath it. So nice three quarter, five eighths piece of plywood, something like that. Just to make sure we don't have one leg sinking down and in. Another common question we get is whether these need to be used in pairs or if you need two pairs or if you need four of them. And they recommend, as long as you're staying within your weight capacity, this is part number CJ31. So this is going to have a 1,000 pound combined weight rating, 500 pounds a piece. So as long as your camper is under that 1,000 pound mark, one set's all you need. We're going to bring them in, position them, and slide them right under the edge of the camper. Get that released. At that point, we just crank our handle to lift them up. Now it's important that you find the center point of your camper. If, you're, uh, if you've got them too far forward, it'll want to tilt back. Too far back, it'll want to tilt forward. So you just lift it a little bit, make sure it's balanced on there properly. But at that point, you just need to lift it up a few inches. Once we've got it lifted up, we know the top bed rails of our truck are going to clear. Just pull on out. At that point, I like two people doing the job. You can have one guy on one side, one guy on the other and you can lower them down kind of at the same rate. If you don't have a second guy, or you, if you don't have extra set of hands, that's okay. Just wanna do it maybe eight inches per side. We'll lower this side down about eight inches, lower that side down about eight inches. You just get it lower down there to the ground so it's not so tipsy, it's not so top heavy. Overall, I think they're gonna do a really good job. Um, they are tried and true. This style of lift has been used for about as long as embed campers have been a thing. The construction I like, it looks, you know, just at first glance, it looks like maybe it's a little flimsy or uh, there's no bolts that hold the pole in, so that kind of can be an area of concern, but no issues with it at all. It works really well, it works very effectively. I've used these several times and never had any issues with them. The crank handle itself, so we've got our release gear there. It actually click as we're going down. Just easy to use, just like the winch on a boat trailer. Each of the winches are rated at 1,400 pounds. That doesn't mean all the components are, but it's overbuilt for this application. So it's going to work out really well. Got a black painted finish on everything else here at the top and the bottom with our tripod. And then, of course, just standard galvanized pipe here. In working with a few customers, um, up north, in-bed truck campers seem to be pretty popular. I think they're popular everywhere, but up north, it makes me think of corrosion. You know, they got a lot of salt and a lot of stuff like that. Winter seems to last about 12 months. But really, no issues with corrosion on them. I think down here, if they're underneath the snow for a while at your feet, you might have issues there. But all in all, it's going to be a nice, solid way to get that camper lifted and get it lowered back down. And really save a lot of the back breaking work. Now, these can be used in other applications as well, like pickup truck toppers or pickup campers, not 
end bed campers, but like camper shells that go over the top. We get questions a lot as to whether you can use these for that, and they work out just fine. Haven't had any issues there. Um, I don't know of too many other things that you might use them for. Um, there, we have had questions in the past about kind of some raised platforms and stuff like that, but I think as long as you're staying in that in bed camper or that truck topper camper shell kind of area, you're going to be in really good shape and they're going to work out really well for you. Now the area our camper is going to rest on, our landing pad here, this is going to be 21 and a half inches long. Comparing it with a lot of the other ones out there, it's right in line, so I don't think you're going to have any issues. It gives us plenty of room to get that weight balanced out here on top. And once you do find the balance point, if you're doing this just for the first time or it's your first time using a set of these, I always like to indicate on my camper where that's at. Um, you can even mark on the bottom there as long as you can see underneath it. And just give yourself an idea the next time you put these in place, you'll be right there in that safe spot where you, you've already tested it and you know it's going to work out for you properly. Now with trucks kind of getting higher and higher, the bed rail sides seem to be getting higher and higher, you will need to take a measurement on your vehicle and just make sure that you're under, say about 55 inches is probably the maximum you'll want to be at at the top. This has the lift potential of 57 inches, so it gets us up there quite a bit. Um, if that's not tall enough for you, if not, it's not high enough for you, the option we have for you would be CJ74. That's going to be a 67-inch lift model, but it's also 3,000-pound capacity. So you're going to be moving up in capacity as well as up in height. But it should give you that additional room that you need, just in case you do have a taller truck. You need to get up there on it. That would be a really good option as well. Guys, I hope that kind of answered some of the common questions we get on these and the best way to use them, how they're going to work, and how high they're going to go. Overall, if you've got a truck bed camper and these fit your requirements, I think it's a really good decision.